Welcome to Mode Bespoke, I'm Atenas. For today's project, we're gonna be crocheting a nautical themed blanket. So let's get started. So here's a look at the blanket we're gonna be crocheting today. Now, as you can see, it's got an anchor design here at the bottom, and then it turns into a striped design, ending with some uneven stripes here at the top. So this blanket is a little bit on the larger side. It's more of a throw. Centimeters, it is 132 centimeters by 119 centimeters, and that's 132 wide by 119 high, and in inches, that is 52 inches across and 47 inches in height. Now, for those of you that like to use written patterns, there is a written pattern available for this on my website. I'm gonna put the link to the shop down in the description box below. The full pattern includes the chart. You can also buy the chart on its own if you prefer to work with that. So let's talk about supplies. The first thing you're gonna need is a hook, and this is gonna be a J hook or a six millimeter hook. Next is our yarn, and I used two different brands of yarn. This is mostly because of the color availability at the shop I was at, but any number four medium worsted or Aran yarn, whatever word you use, any medium yarn will work just fine. So for the first colors, let's go with the Karen Simply Soft. So here's the information on the yarn. You can also find all of the yarn specs on the blog, so I'll leave that link down below. So I purchased two skeins of this color, and this is country blue, but again, you can use any color you'd like. This one is the lighter of the two blues, since I used navy and then this lighter one. Um, so it was two of these by Karen Simply Soft. The next yarn I used was this one that's called Soft and Shiny. It has a very similar sheen and a very similar feel to the Karen Simply Soft. So you can substitute the yarns if you prefer. Another thing is that you can find Karen Simply Soft in most shops in the US, at least that sell yarn, but the Soft and Shiny yarn is available only at Michael's stores. So here's a look at the specs for this yarn. As you can tell, the yardage is just a little bit smaller. I think it's four yards less than the Karen Simply, Simply Soft. But otherwise, the yarns are pretty similar. This is also a medium size yarn or a number four weight yarn. And the colors that I purchased for this yarn, so I got two skeins in gray, and then I got three skeins in white, and then one skein in the navy blue, which is right over here. If you want the color breakdown, again, that is all available on the blog. You can go check that out. I've listed all of the information for the yarn right there. All right, the last thing we're gonna need as far as supplies goes is the chart. Now the chart is available on the website and normally this prints in a landscape form. Uh, however, I printed this from my phone and I wasn't able to change the page orientation, but this is a full page chart. So let's begin with the project. We're gonna make a chain of 198 stitches. From there, we're gonna make 12 rows of half double crochets. To make this project a little easier, the only stitch you need to learn is the half double crochet. We're gonna use the stitch throughout the entire blanket, okay? All right, so let's get started. So we're gonna to need to make a slip knot. Now, for those of you that don't know how to make a slip knot, leave a nice long tail, wrap the yarn around two fingers, insert your hook behind this front loop, grab the yarn that's behind it, and pull that through. And then you can just remove your fingers and pull on both threads to tighten your knot. And there you go. To make a chain, you are going to wrap your yarn around your hook. So here's the, the yarn, wrap it behind the hook. You're gonna pull this top loop through this bottom loop, and there you go, one chain. So yarn over, pull through, and that's two. Yarn over, pull through, and that's three. Continue working on your chain until you have a total of 198 stitches. Once your chain is complete, we're gonna begin with our first row of half double crochet. Now skip to the third stitch from your hook. So skip one, two, and on that third chain from your hook, you're gonna half double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, you're gonna insert your hook into that third chain, you're gonna yarn over again, and you're gonna pull your yarn through, and, well, your yarn and your hook through the stitch. You'll have three loops on your hook, so it'll look like this. Next, you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull through all three of these loops. And there you go, that is your half double crochet. Now complete a half double crochet in each one of the stitches of the chain. 
For those of you that need a little more practice, let's do another one. You're gonna yarn over. You're gonna insert your hook into this next stitch. You're gonna yarn over. You're gonna pull your hook out. And this way you have three loops on your hook. We're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops. So one last time in the next stitch, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through three. So I'm gonna to continue to work the remaining stitches of the row. I'll see you at the very last stitch of the chain. All right, so we made it to the last stitch of the row. I'm gonna crochet one last half double crochet to finish. And here it is, row one. Remember that we need 12 rows. So to begin the next row, we are going to chain one. So we're gonna go yarn over, pull through. We're gonna turn our work around and you're gonna begin your first half double crochet on the first stitch of the row. So that is the chain, here is the stitch. So beginning on that very first stitch, you begin your first half double crochet. So again, you yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and you close the stitch with a yarn over, pull through three, and that's it. Continue working a half double crochet in every, uh, every stitch, and these are right here, are the stitches, until you complete a total of 12 rows. This is row number two. You need 10 more rows, and then we'll begin with the anchor. So complete this section right here, and I will see you again in just a moment. All right, so for the next 17 rows, you are gonna need to use the chart. Now, the chart, that we're, at least the spacing between the stitches, is a little bit different in the blanket than in the chart. So if we take a look at the chart here, what we need to pay attention to are the actual stitch counts that make up the anchor. We don't really need to pay too much attention to the spacing right here, see so these white stitches. So um, if we look at the white stitches right here, these correspond to the gray stitches of our blanket. Now, the spacing between the, the anchors on the chart is different than that of the blanket. Let me explain why. The way I designed this chart is so that it can be used with multiple projects. So I intend to use this same anchor design in a few other projects since I'm completing several nautical themed um, like sweaters and pillows and all that stuff for my nephew's room. So I thought I would make the chart in a way that could be used for as many projects as you want. So that way it's not limited to just this blanket pattern. Especially for all of you that like to purchase the charts, you'll be able to use it with any project of your choosing. Anyway, so that's why the chart is just a little bit different, but if you want the specific stitch counts, those are available on the written pattern. And again, that written pattern is available on the website. All right, so let's take a look at our blanket here. We're gonna begin by crocheting 15 half double crochets at the beginning of the row. We do have a total of 16, but 15 are just regular half double crochets. Half double crochet number 16 is a color change. So I will show you how to do that color change. So in the meantime, just crochet 15 half double crochets and then we'll take a look at the chart. Once you've completed all your 15 half double crochets, you're gonna do stitch number 16 as a color switch. So you're gonna begin with your yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. And when you have three loops on your hook, you're going to change your yarn color. So I'm going to drop the gray yarn I'm going to pick up the navy yarn. We're going to leave a little tail end right here. We're going to make a loop and pull that on the hook. Make sure you leave a long enough tail end that you can weave in later as you don't want your blanket to unravel. Once you've made your loop, you're going to pull the navy loop through the three gray loops on the hook. So we're just going to pull through and there we go. So what we just completed is 16 half double crochets in gray and now we've switched to the blue yarn. So something you need to pay attention to is if you take a look here at our blanket, this is a reversible blanket. So this side and this side are exactly the same. So you got the front, the back, you can see the anchor on both sides. In order to create this reversible look, you need to hide your yarn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the gray yarn since we're gonna crochet in blue. To hide your yarn, you're gonna Hold your gray yarn and you're gonna lay it over the stitches. So here are our stitches. You're just gonna lay it over the top of it. That way as you crochet your blue stitches, it's going to hide your yarn. 
It's also going to keep your gray yarn close by and it's going to be available whenever you need to switch colors again. So whether you crochet two stitches or 15 stitches in blue, your gray yarn will follow along with the rest of your stitches and you'll be able to switch colors right away without having a long strand of yarn hanging out in the back of your work. All right, so we need to crochet two stitches in navy. So we have our first half double crochet and then we need a second half double crochet. But if we take a look at our chart, you can see that we need a total of two. So here we go, here's one and two in our blue. So the second stitch is gonna have to be a color switch in order to switch back to our gray yarn. So we're gonna begin the half double crochet in navy. And once we have our three loops, we're gonna pull the, the blue yarn towards the front. So pull it in front of your work. You can just hold it down with your thumb. You're gonna pull up your gray yarn. You're gonna yarn over in gray and pull through the three navy loops. So here we go. Here we go. So this leaves you with two half double crochets in navy or in blue, and then the rest of your stitches are in gray. Now that you are in gray, we're going to crochet 18 stitches. So you're gonna make 17 half double crochets. Stitch number 18 is going to be a color switch, and then you have two stitches in blue. And then you're gonna crochet 18 stitches in gray, and then again, two in blue. And 18 gray, two blue, and so forth, until you finish the row. Now, you are gonna crochet a total of nine anchors. So I showed you how to do the first one. You're gonna repeat eight more times, so you have a total of nine anchors. The remaining stitches of the row, you are gonna crochet in gray. So going back to our work, we're gonna crochet the remaining stitches in gray, since we just finished our last half double crochet in blue. Remember, I'm only doing one sample of the anchor just to show you the stitching. All right, just like we did with the gray, we have to hide the blue yarn so that it is not visible on one side of the blanket. So we're just gonna hold it above the stitches like this, and then you're gonna yarn over and half double crochet in gray. And always make sure you hold your blue yarn above the stitch. And that way, as you crochet, you can see here, your yarn is hidden within the half double crochets. And there you go. So complete the rest of the row by crocheting your eight remaining anchors. And then we'll go on to row number two. So after we've completed row number one, and as you can see here, there are row numbers on the side of our chart. Once you begin to crochet the chart, we're gonna begin again with row number one, instead of it being row number 13, which is where we would have been, just to make it easier to follow the chart. Now, you're gonna see the stitches here along the side. You don't need to begin with um, row one, stitch one. I give you the stitch counts in the pattern. Something else you're gonna notice is that it has two sets of numbers here at the bottom. The bottom set of numbers that are labeled LH are for left-handed crocheters. So you'd start with stitch number one on the left and work towards the right. The numbers right above that are for right-handed crocheters. So you start on the right and stitch towards the left. So moving on to the end of the row, we're at the last stitch. So I'm gonna crochet my last half double crochet. There we go. And now we're gonna begin the next row. So you can begin with a chain one we're gonna turn our work around. And since we have to continue to hide the second color or our blue yarn, so we're gonna lay the yarn above the stitches just like we did in the previous row. So we're gonna hold this up, we get ready with our gray yarn, and then we begin our first half double crochet. So let's take a look at our blanket here and I'll give you those stitch counts. So for this side border, we're gonna begin row number two with 14 half double crochets in gray. Stitch number 14 is going to be your color switch. So we're gonna begin here with one, and then two, three, and so forth until you get to stitch number 13. I'll see you at stitch 13 so we can do the color switch together. All right, so we're right here, right by our first anchor. Let's take a look at our chart. As you can see here, we're going to add two blue stitches on the right side of the, of the anchor, and then the center two stitches. 
and we're going to add two additional stitches at the end of the anchor so on the left side so we are at stitch number 13 which means stitch number 14 is our color switch so we're going to yarn over in gray insert the hook yarn over pull up a loop we're going to pull our gray yarn towards the back of the work pull up our blue yarn yarn over and pull through all three loops and now we have to hide the gray yarn so referring back to the chart we need those two stitches in the right two center stitches and then two stitches on the left that is a total of six half double crochets in navy so we begin with one two three four five and then stitch number six is going to be our color switch so we're going to begin the stitch in navy once we have our three loops we're going to pull our navy yarn towards the front and i'm just going to hold it down with my thumb and we're going to yarn over in gray and pull through all three navy loops now if you're wondering why i pull the navy yarn towards the front and the gray yarn goes towards the back that's to keep the yarn from tangling so as you continue to add more anchors and more rows to your work your yarn will start to twist up so by holding one yarn towards the front and then one towards the back it avoids twisting up your yarn so just pay attention to that you may need to switch it at the beginning of every row so next row you might have to pull the gray yarn forward but pay attention to that get a little bit of practice in and you shouldn't have any issues with your yarn getting all wrapped up all right now moving on for the next part after you have finished your six half double crochets in blue we're going to do the center section so let's repeat those counts it was 14 and 6 and in between you're going to have 14 so it's 14 6 14 6 14 6 all the way to the end of the row once you have completed your row you're going to chain one turn your work around and begin with row number three row number three begins with 13 half double crochets here at the beginning so this very front part is 13 half double crochets and then you're going to do eight in navy so 13 8 and then 12. so then from the, from then on out it's going to be 12 8 12 8 12 8 and then complete the last stitches of the row in gray so this section is a little bit different because remember that you are changing two of your stitches are going from gray to blue something that you don't have at the very beginning of the row that's why you have a different stitch count at the beginning of the row than you do between the anchors and when you begin row number three you're going to start with 12 half double crochets and on stitch number 13 you're going to complete a color switch so it's going to be a total of 13 half double crochets the last stitch is a color switch so now we are ready with blue we're going to complete eight half double crochets in navy and that's so we can take a look here at our chart as you can see for row number three we're only adding one blue stitch to the right side of the anchor and then one blue stitch to the left side we're not adding additional stitches we're just switching a gray stitch we're turning it into a navy stitch so i hope that made sense <laughs> but we're not actually increasing or anything we're just switching the stitch color all right so once you have completed your seven half double crochets in navy you're going to begin half double crochet number eight in blue you're going to finish it in gray for a color switch so that was eight half double crochets in blue and then you complete 12 in gray so it's 12 in gray eight in blue 12 gray eight blue until you complete the rest of the row now from here on out i think you kind of understand how the chart works and how you're going to be uh, creating this anchor design onto your blanket so i'll let you go ahead and finish that i'm going to move on to showing you how to do the color switches and the rest of the blanket so for the stripes if you need to look at this chart don't forget that you can go swing by the website and purchase it there you can download it save it onto your favorite device and you can print it as many times as you want so go check that out i'll leave the link to the pattern right below if you purchase the full pattern, it does include a chart. So you do not need to buy the, the written pattern and the chart in addition to. You have two buying options, full pattern with chart or just the chart 
by itself. So again, those links are down in the description box below. So let me continue working on the rest of the anchor, but in the meantime, once you have completed your design, you're gonna follow it up by creating 12 rows of half double crochet at the top. So we have 12 and then the anchor and then the 12 at the bottom. The next section, and especially for those of you that are a little bit more advanced and just kind of want to move on with the project, is made up of stripes. So these stripes are made up of eight rows each. So it's eight rows of white, eight rows in country blue, eight white, eight blue, and so forth until you get to the top. So let me open up the blanket real quick and I'll tell you how many rows you need of each color. So beginning with the white, we need one, two, three, four, five, and then six. So it's gonna be six stripes of white, eight rows a piece. And in the blue, we need one, two, three, four, and five. So six white, five in blue, and then you move on to your uneven stripes, which is this navy section. Now the navy section is made up of six stripes in navy, one stripe in gray, six stripes in navy, followed up by eight stripes in white, and three stripes in navy to finish off the project. So something you just keep in mind is that this last blue stripe, you may or may not have enough yarn to complete all eight rows. So I was only able to complete seven rows because I ran out of yarn at about here. So I had this small section left without enough yarn to complete. So I only completed seven rows in this light blue. So if you have enough yarn to complete eight rows, super. If you have enough yarn to complete six, great. Complete however many rows you have enough yarn to complete. So whether that's six, seven, or eight rows, go ahead and do what you can. And then you switch to the white yarn and then complete the rest of the blanket. I had enough yarn for the white because remember we had three skeins of the white yarn. So this is how much yarn I had left. So that's with the white. And here's that country blue. That was not enough to complete an entire uh, row. Here's what's left of the gray. And then here's what was left of the navy. So we're gonna use up almost all of the yarn that, uh, that you purchased for this project. So I'm gonna complete the row that I'm working on right here, and then I'll show you how to do the color switch at the beginning of the row so that you can create your stripes. All right, so here's my project. We're just gonna pretend that I finished the rest of the anchor. We have one last stitch to complete, and we're gonna pretend that this is row number 12. So if you remember, I told you you have to complete your anchor, and then you have to do row number 12, and then, or I guess 12 rows, there we go. So it's these 12 rows, and then you complete your first colored stripe. So we're gonna pretend we're on that last row. So here's the final stitch. This is where you're gonna do your color switch. So you just do your yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and once you have your three, you're gonna get your white yarn. We're gonna leave a nice and long tail end. Remember that you're gonna have to weave that in later, but pull that white loop through the three gray loops, and then drop all your other yarn. The only yarn you need to use is the white yarn. So you're going to chain in white. So just yarn over, pull through in your white yarn, turn your work around, and from here on out for the next eight rows, you just crochet using the white yarn. Remember that you always begin the row on that first half double crochet, otherwise you will accidentally start decreasing. So since you no longer need your gray yarn, you can cut it. So leave a nice long tail end, cut it, and you're done. You won't need the gray yarn again for several other rows. Continue to work in white when you get to the end of the row on row number eight. So remember it's eight rows in white. When you get to that final row, the final stitch, you're going to switch to blue so that you can begin your stripe in country blue. So right over here. So again, that's very last stitch you begin your half double crochet in white and you finish it in blue. Always leave a long tail end. You will weave that in later. If you leave a long tail end, you'll be able to hide your yarn and it'll keep it from unraveling, especially if you plan to machine wash this blanket. So now I'll leave you to complete the rest of your blanket, but before I go, let's go over those stripe counts again. So you need six stripes in white, five in blue, then six rows in navy, one in gray, six in navy, 
eight rows in white and three rows in blue. And there you go. Now, for those of you planning on resizing the, this blanket, you can resize it. You will, however, need to use the chart because the chart has stitch counts. Now, if you take a look at the chart on the widest part of the anchor, we have two stitches on the right and two stitches on the left. Meaning that if you are going to crochet multiple anchors, the spacing between your anchors is going to make, be made up of four stitches. So what you would do to resize it is you count the number of stitches, the total stitches that make up the anchor, which is 20. So you would count in multiples of 20. So it's 20, 20, 20, 20 for every anchor that you want. Once you've completed the chain, you need to add an additional two stitches. Those two stitches are gonna be for that first row of half double crochets. If you remember the chain we made, we skipped two chains and worked our first half, of half double crochet in the third stitch from our hook. So you need to add those two additional stitches so you have that the stitch count that you need to complete the project. But that's all you really need to keep in mind as far as um, resizing the project goes. But other than that, uh, yeah, I hope you give this project a try. Let me know what you think. For those of you that haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. To find the pattern for this project, you can head on over to modebespoke.com. There is a link for this in the description box below. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at mode.bespoke. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again in the next tutorial.